13 more, so they get 13 people off their list. Okay? Number 14 didn't make the cut. And this is a compensatory system. So the overall makeup of the parliament is, uh, uh, is proportional. Well, each party gets the right number of seats um, off the party lists. There's another variation on that where uh, you can have a, uh, a party list and individual writings, but they're not connected. So uh, all the, the, the list seats are simply divided up in proportion to the votes that are cast, possibly even on a separate belt. Um, oh, and I should mention the way it works with uh, a mixed system is normally you get, you get two votes. You get to vote for a party and you get to vote for an individual candidate in your riding best of both worlds, or the worst, depending on who you talk to. Um, they've got a ballot here. It's kind of, well, I never want to stop complaining about the technology. Um, okay, so that's a mixed member proportional system. Um, so what are the uh, attributes of a mixed system? Well, uh, you get, it's proportional. It's a proportional system. So you get accurate representation of parties, and yet each local district still has its representative. Um, you're going to get more choices of parties at the polls. Um, uh, you get higher voter turnout, and that's you know that's not theory. That's what's observed in practice. Uh, far fewer votes are wasted, and uh, you do, it's far less likely to get these uh, phony majorities. Uh, better representation for third parties, for racial minorities, and more women. Um, and of course, you still got writing, so you can still have the gerrymandering problem. And another wrinkle about it is you now have two kinds of MP, right? You've got list MPs, and you've got writing MPs. And the writing MPs swear that the list MPs are good enough. I'm home in my writing all weekend, working with my constituents, and those guys are out playing golf. They don't have any constituents. Of course, they do have constituents. The reality is that they've got they've got more constituents because they they represent a much larger area. And and, and in practice, what we see is that uh, list MPs do do constituency work. They have the offices, and they have exactly the same powers and responsibilities and do the same work as uh, as writing MPs. Nevertheless, it just provides one more thing to argue about. So, um, well, okay, so. Whenever you've got a proportional system, it's far less likely, since you don't get phony majorities, you don't get majorities, period. You normal, it's normal that you get a situation where no one party has half the seats and therefore can control uh, uh, what goes on in Parliament. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing, because it means these parties have to sit down and talk to each other, and more than one set of interests has to be taken account of. In, in producing the legislation. Um, but we'll get to that. I'm still talking about mechanics here. Okay, the other um, proportional system is something called the single transferable vote. I didn't talk about the alternative vote. Back up to the majoritarian uh, system. So the one I left out is called the alternative vote. I mentioned that there's a two round system that uh, is the extra expense of having uh, an extra election. And you can avoid that by having a preferential ballot. You get a list of candidates, and instead of simply putting an X there, you see, you put a one beside your favorite one. And then you put a two beside your next favorite one, and a three, and so on, and, and vote for as many as you want. If your first choice gets eliminated, then your vote gets transferred and counts for your second choice. If he gets eliminated, votes, uh, it counts for your third choice. So that uh, speeds up the two-round thing. You don't have to have a second. Election. That system is used in Australia and in Nauru and uh, nowhere else. Um, and it's, um, it's, it, gives, it sort of gives the voters more choice. It gives you slightly more incentive to vote for the third party. Um, uh, it appears that everybody got 50% of the vote. The reality is uh, the same people can elect. In fact, um, it turns out that vote splitting is the way that third parties get votes. So it actually reduces diversity, discourages diversity. We talk a little bit about how, about how well, I'll, I'll get to that. Okay, so what's the single transferable vote? 
it's a proportional system that uses a preferential ballot. And the uh, beauty of this is uh, the way you count the alternative vote, you count over everybody's votes. If somebody gets 50%, they're elected. But if nobody's elected, what do you do? You take the person on the bottom who got the fewest votes, and they're eliminated. Take their votes and transfer them to the next bill of preference. <coughs> Again, did anybody get 50%? No. Take the next person on the bottom, transfer their votes. And you just keep doing that until somebody's got 50%. The beauty of the single transferable vote, it does that, but it also transfers surplus votes. What's a surplus vote? Well, there's two ways to waste votes. One is to vote for somebody who doesn't get elected. But supposing you vote for somebody who gets twice as many votes as he needed to get elected, then uh, your vote is wasted. That person was already elected, so your vote is just as wasted uh, as if you voted for somebody who didn't get elected. So the beauty of the single transferable vote is it not only transfers the, uh, uh, the votes from the people who get eliminated at the bottom, but it transfers the surplus votes from the people who've already been elected, so that everybody's vote counts fully. And this is uh, this is a system that was developed uh, sort of simultaneously in England and in uh, Australia. Uh, in England by a guy named Hare, and in Australia by a guy named Clark. Uh, at about the same time in um, the late 19th century, and it's um, they're they just celebrated actually 100 years of using this system in Tasmania, and they're quite proud of it. Uh, being the first place to, uh, to use it. So, um, I, yeah, single transferable vote. This is just a, uh, uh, me, moving right along. Uh, oh yes, uh, now semi-proportional. So those are the main systems. Those are the ones that are actually in use in various places around the world. There are other things, uh, types of semi-proportional voting systems. What's the cumulative vote? Um, I mentioned uh, block voting. So there's three candidates to be elected, so you get three votes. Um, in cumulative voting, they let you uh, pile up those votes. Instead of, uh, well, maybe I'll, I'll cast all three of my votes for this person. Um, or I'll put, you know, I'll vote two votes to this person, one person, one vote to that person. And what's the good of that? Well, it does make it easier for uh, minority candidates to be elected. Because if you've got somebody who you know is an underdog, and you know the, and your group is trying to elect somebody, and you know you're only 15% uh, of the population, then you can plump all your votes for your candidate. And sure enough, uh, this system has been demonstrated to be better at electing minority candidates. And there are various uh, places in the United States where they use cumulative voting uh, in uh, municipal elections as a way of trying to get uh, uh, black candidates elected. And, it, and it, you know, they have some success doing that. Um, the limited vote is uh, something very similar. Um, it's another version of at-large voting, rarely used. I believe Spain uses it to elect its Senate. And uh, a number of towns and cities in the United States, uh, mostly in Connecticut and Pennsylvania, uh, use the limited vote. It's it's at large voting, but you're only voting for one person. Instead of getting eight votes, you only get one vote. Um, so that gets you a, a slightly more proportional system, but you still have the problem of, of surplus votes, not counting credit. Okay. So those are our voting systems. And uh, so what's the difference between one another? Do you really make a difference? The uh, expert on this is a, a guy named Aaron Leipart, who is, um, I believe he's a Danish scholar who, who works at the uh, uh, University of San Diego. <coughs> and he wrote a book um, in 1999 called Patterns of Democracy, um, Government Forms and Performance in 36 Countries. And what he did was pull together 